Now, I got up with the chickens this morning. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to, while I'm waiting for Glenn, he takes his daughter to school in the morning, so I'm going to go over this area here, so when he gets here, this will be ready to wet sand. That's, that's the area we repaired. There's a couple little areas on here. I got out my trusty little uh, nitrous stain for this. I think there's a couple little areas on here, but then what will happen is that can dry. And when he gets here, we can go to work. It's going to be uh, huh? so far so good as far as a nice day goes. Karen's flowers are actually making a big comeback here. And we got our wisteria just coming out on the pond. But that's all cosmetic stuff. We got to get these parts cooking. Now all that can be drying. We got a lot of little spots on this to work on. And the good news is now when I have my breakfast, that can be drying by the time Glenn gets here. He'll be ready to go to work. So this is the Rhino Wet 400. And what I want to do is all the body work, the little spots like around these scoops, I want to get as much of this done as I can before Glenn gets here because he'll want to use the table. For any spot that has an edge, you can see the edges come right through. This will just make the edges a lot better. The most important thing at this point in time is to get around all the edges because if you don't, what will happen, that's where the paint will start to peel and chip no matter what level of finish you put on it. It's always prone to peel right at the edge. Anyway, we expect Glenn here momentarily. He went to go get some, we had to get another dozen cans of primer. But now once this is all sanded out real nice, once that whole part is sanded and ready, we'll be ready to put on a final coat of primer and then we can start the silver. So Glenn has got his hard blocks and his soft blocks and he's working by that area. Now you gotta admit, even even right now, that's not as nothing like it was. Well, now where you got a low spot, just keep sanding. You right. you're not going to sand through into the other side. Right. Just so, did you take a before picture of this thing? Because yes. Yes, was... I took the before because I want you to. When this is done, you know, you could send Steve a picture and say, "Here's your old seat." You know. He won't believe it. No. Got to show him the before. Before. Well, you'll you'll eventually drive up there and. Uh, <laughs> Knowing you, you try to rub it in his nose. <laughs> See, if you knew Wendy, you'd have bikes that look like this. <laughs> body by Wendy? Yeah, body by, Biceps yeah. by Wendy. Bi one bicep, anyway. <laughs> right. You ever notice the guys that do this start to look like one arm is twice the size of the other arm? <laughs> oh, my God. And you can't do it left-handed. Trust me, I tried doing it. If you do it left-handed, you look like a pitcher that's got a blindfold on. Now, all the inner edges have a coat of silver now. Keep in mind, what happens with these parts, silver is the worst color ever to paint. It shows every single mistake. There's nothing you can do. In the world of model planes, we paint things silver to find the mistake. It's like fluorescent lights. So I suspect that when I'm done, the part looks pretty nice in primer, but there's a reality. The reality here is when this is done with silver, we're going to show a lot more mistakes. And I'm just just dusting on this first coat. I know it's going to need three coats. And this, if you if you haven't seen the Benelli silver in real life, it's it's a beautiful color when you get the third coat on and all the flakes are sitting. Nice and straight and everything, it really does look nice. And believe it or not, the sun has come out. It's already gone up. I was up real early this morning, but Glenn went out shopping. He bought us a whole bag of goodies down there. We got all kinds of sandpaper and who knows what else he brought. Muffins or something, I don't know. But as the silver goes on, the first coat, I just get on any way I want. Then I got to start putting one coat this way, one coat that way. I just want to get the part looking silver and see if... Actually, it's going to look pretty nice. All this stuff. 
just becomes a labor of love. And I'm hoping Glenn and I can bounce back and forth today and get, uh, get a lot done. Because we have the baby coming at 2 o'clock, so. But we're used to working like this. We usually can get quite a bit done. See, now it gets difficult because we can't get underneath it easily. And of course, just in the nick of time, the wind comes up. Just, just what we need right now. Now again, if we were doing this as a, a street bike, a show bike, or something, we would have, we would have put a thousand uh, dollars more work into these parts. I'm not sure if Vlad wants to spend another thousand, but I think these are going to be. They're definitely going to be a nice track bike. And I've got to find out what he wants to do as far as decals go before I really can go to the next step. Because he does have some stickers that go on here. Anyway, I'll get downstairs and see what Glenn is doing. Now, as we're bouncing back and forth from project to project, and because the wind had come up, I wanted to make sure that, that silver is drying up. All right. So now we can go downstairs, work on, and, and once we get the seat in prime, we'll come out and start one of these body, these, the big parts. And these are the biggies. All right, and do it all by feel. The feel is the whole thing. I mean, when you're done here, you're going to have a, a pretty nice seat. A big you know, you know, and I don't know what these seats cost, but I know they're not 50 bucks. And it's about 275 for a new one unpainted. Okay, and you still got to paint it. So what's paint. the big deal? <laughs> it, the only difference is the, the, the hour or two you do of the, the sand of the body work. Yep. Now, I just hope you're not going to ride so fast that the paint is going to peel off at, at 300 I'm kilometers. Gonna I'm going to try. As you pass Valentino Rossi. Just wear your earplugs. <laughs> I plan to break the speed of sound. <laughs> As Lorenzo sees you go flying by with your nose on the ground. I'm breaking the sound barrier. I'm going to be dragging my knee, my elbow, and your nose. My <laughs> oh my God. Yes, my <laughs> nose. You name it. All right, but you got the idea here is, is always go back, like with this part here. Yeah, Don't even look at it. That well, decent. It's perfect. Yeah, that feels good. That's, but it's a lot of labor. But it's just labor. That's all it is. It's like mowing the grass, shoveling coal, you know, being on the Titanic. It's just no big deal. <laughs> Be Top the first the one in the lifeboat. Top of the world. Top of the world. Now, right about now is like what you said yesterday. We should call in the sanding double. This is you where know. I go. Okay, yeah. so the, basically this is what we have to keep doing. Okay, so uh, okay. You're, you're ready for me to do this little repair. Now, what happened is... There's a piece of the Bondo that was in here from the job before. I, need, I don't know if you can see it right there. That has, up for you. that has popped out. Now, the first thing you got to do is get a hairdryer and dry this because there'll be moisture that, that seeped inside. Dry this whole area. On the fiber. I'll get the CA and then you sand it dry because you don't want any water wicking in there. And then we'll fix it from the back. We'll put a little CA, although that it, it that is in our repair that came out. It's his repair. It's, that's it, an older brick. It's an older, yeah. And it's soft, so we'll fill that with thin CA. That's no problem. If you bondo that, you're dead in the water. Right. First, you got to dry it up. That's the first thing. Uh, the blue button. Yeah. Okay. Dry it up. 
See, if you understand why the CA works so well, that it's not going to stick to water no matter what you do. Let me, let me get on the camera. Okay. You can see us get it out. Yeah. Dig a hole if you can. Just fill a hole. But it's got to be dry. See, if you... So, so supposing you're doing the uh, the California body trick here, just putting Bondo on everything, that hole is still there. Dig it out. Don't, if you go so right got, through, it doesn't matter if you go right through. No, we're actually... You're on solid ground now? We're on it. Okay, just get it good and dry. So kind of like a dentist, I guess, right? You're, exactly. You want to get all the dead wood out of there. You can't, you can't do CA over something wet or something flimsy like that. Yeah. Dig it out. Take, take your time and dig it out. Yeah. Because the CA is capillary. It'll sink its way right in there. But it's not going to do anything. As soon as it sees water, it's, it's not going to bond. Even if you dig the trunk out, it doesn't matter. We could patch it from the back too. And this is a good little spot for you to learn this technique of repairing on. Beautiful. Dig it out like a dentist. Just like a dentist. Get it all out of there. Because the thicker we make it, the better. And the beautiful part about carbon fiber, carbon fiber cuts. See, if you do this with e-glass, you get threads coming out. It never ends. It right. never ends. And no matter what you do, the threads just come out fuzzy. Carbon cuts like a razor. And it doesn't absorb water. Right. Now, the carbon is the way to do this. We'll stick a little carbon. You're going to be so impressed. Dig it out there. This, Let me just would you bring your fellow's teeth to this guy for a repair? Paging Holy Mr. kaboomba. Paging Mr. Washington. <laughs> George, God, balls George, of wood get in here. Yeah, you got an oil is a good way to do it. That's good. Okay. Just want to scrape it until I get hit it? some exactly. hard surfaces and dig away. Here at here at Wendy's Dental School, or is it Mental School? I'm not sure it isn't Mental School. Nurse, send the next patient <laughs> in. I'm ready for the next root canal. <laughs> yes. Another great tip. Every once in a while, in this case, we're almost finished sanding here. Put some clean water. All the sediment from the primer, all the stuff you see that goes in the sandpaper, winds up and you, you're just taking gop at. Now, one of the things guy, I've seen guys do in a body shop, they use a big bucket of water. And then the stuff sinks further down into the bucket. Well, we for here, a bucket, I've tried it, is very inconvenient. So I just change it out every once in a while. Okay, now what do you got? A little crack back here? Got a crack back here. I just want to open it. Okay, open it up. It's time for you to do it on your own. Okay. Here you go. He's going to demonstrate. He's, he's at the point. Open, dry it with a hairdryer. Open the crack up. It's capillary. It's going to go right in. Right. Okay. Now just wipe it with a clean towel. Press it together. Hold it for two seconds. And if, if you're lazy, you can take a little bit of accelerator, the kicker, and just let it sit. Now, in a case where you got a crack, put some material in the back. Get it from the inside. The same thing, the thin CA. That'll that'll wick it in from the back too. I don't want Steve at a ECS to say, "Oh man, you guys wrecked my bike." There you go. Just the minimum kicker. To, if you put too much, it goes off too fast. Oh, smoke. Okay, that's beautiful. Yeah, it's smoking. It, you're getting it to go off too fast. That's okay. For that, it's fine. Now just resand that. We're pretty much ready for you to do the next coat of primer. Yes. And as it always is, the sun comes out when he's ready to paint. When I get ready to paint, the wind blows. <laughs> he must go to some church that I don't go to. I don't, well, I don't go, so. All right. Prep all, even though M600 is a thousand times better in my humble opinion, that will work. Now, what we've been using this tripod. The idea is to get all these edges, I know you sanded them down, get all these edges nice and radius, because that's where the paint will start to peel up. Then make sure you get inside too. Yep. What we did, we wound up taking a zip tie and tying a seat to the tripod. Light coats now, just light coats, all you need. And tomorrow, Glenn will get the uh, the official Ducati paint that doesn't match any Ducati ever made. Unless you paint the whole bike, <laughs> which is exactly what we're doing. But it was made in Italy, so. So it's got to be right. It's 
going to also get a little bit of this stuff in here. With the sun? That, that we'll leave it out in the sun to cook. It'll be nice. Now you got the priming technique pretty well now that it's it's light coats. Don't yep. try mopping it on. Get it all in one shot, and that. And I think I told you when I first started painting anything. I would get runs, and I said to you, yep. why is that? And you said, because you're trying to get it all in one shot. Well, you didn't get any runs yesterday. No. Very few, anyway. And I didn't get any runs in Vince's wheels, No, nice. No, the wheels were nice. Now, the other thing, with the sun coming out like this, who knew the sun was coming out? We can, uh, while this is drying, we'll put it over in the driveway, take out the big fairing part, and we can start stripping that puppy right down. So nothing will go to waste. We already got two seats drying. Now with the wind blowing and Glenn's getting his part ready, we're gonna to try to get some sanding on this, get another another shot of the sandpaper on this. Maybe because it's such a nice day, we'll even get some silver on this, I don't know. Now Glenn's getting the, uh, the sanding box out. Run the extension cord, we got, all this has to be sanded out, of course. This has to be sanded. And I think if you use the uh, use this one first and then the detail one second, okay. do one side at a time. Up here you can change the shape just a little bit. Grind that around, grind that. It doesn't matter if you open this up just a little bit, you won't notice it. Right. This you can sand down. Right. Then we gotta do these repairs. There's a piece missing. But we know how to deal with pieces missing, huh? You know there's a saying in the world of model planes when you crash, save all the pieces. <laughs> I guess this guy just didn't get it. <laughs> Well, maybe it's not a model plane. Anyway, while we're doing that, Glenn's gonna work on this. I'm gonna start sanding down this. Yeah, obviously, we got a lot of sanding still to be done. Now, you would think if we were making a show bike out of this, well, we'd, we'd be doing 10 times the amount of work. But we're trying to keep this project within budget and uh, hopefully we will. See all the big paint runs here? You get rid of all that. With this, you can get rid of the paint runs while you're doing it. Anything, do it with your hand. Where your hand tells you there's a mistake, just just keep at it. This I'm not going to go crazy on okay. because they put body filler inside the fiber and it, this is already pushed in. Well, we could fix that from the back if you want. You know, we could fill, sand the out, just sand leave it. that for the last. And we'll fill that from the back with carbon fiber. This is what I like. Both men working at full power. Men? Okay, the next step on our illustrious project here is just going to be we got it zip tied in. I'll take a clean paper towel. We prep sold it down already. We're ready for that first coat of silver. Now that's silver, believe me when I tell you, this is a true thing. If you have any little imperfections in the parts, it shows them up 10 times worse than if you paint it white, light blue, light green, some chalky pink, pink. Anyway, we are ready to see what this guy's gonna look like in silver. Glenn ran down to the bagel shop to get us lunch. This is now it's starting to get exciting. Okay, the first coat of silver is drying up on this. Obviously, silver shows every little mistake. But we'll deal with that more. We got two more coats of silver to put on there. And he's back from lunch. What do we have it's here? Drying in the Look at this, dry drying out. in the sun. Are we like, we're like lizards here. Love it. Eating bugs or something. Look at that puppy. You'd never know. You, let me tell you something. Right now, you, you're going to take a picture of that and send it to ECS to he see. Wouldn't it. No, he won't believe it. He'll probably think you're lying. Actually, you should have sent it to Joe. I'm gonna. That's a good idea. I'll take a picture. Send a picture of that to Joe. That'll be neat. 
Very, very cool. We love to brag about how technically inept we are. But that, see, there's things on this that if this were painted a different color, you'd never see them. But you will see them in silver. And that's why this is going to require a little more work than the average part. But I think, I think for right now, boy, we, we put a lot of labor into this, believe me. And there's a bad spot here we got to deal with. I don't know what was in the gel coat. There was something that just it wouldn't, wouldn't stick. I had to play with it. There's a wrinkle in actually in the gel coat up here. I don't know if I can get rid of that to some degree. I'll but, tell you, out of, all the, out of all the pieces that we've seen so far, track bike pieces or whatever, this is, I hate to say this because Vlad will probably get mad at me. That's it's, okay. It's probably one of the, the cheapest, thinnest pieces yeah, of it is. glass I've ever seen. You know what's going to happen when you take those pieces of wood out? It's going to go... It's just very yeah, strange. It's, and it's a beautiful piece. The yeah. mold is gorgeous. But I, you know what? I have a feeling it was molded okay, but it was sitting somewhere all bent up for years or uh -huh. whatever. Well, I'll, I'll ask Vlad what the story is, yeah. and uh, everything's got a story in our life, that's for sure. But we're doing the best we can. For a track bike? Vlad, the day you get to see this, I hope you're, uh, I hope you're reasonably happy. For a track happy. bike, you're going to jump up and down. And yeah, do yeah, when you pass me, and I'm on my RD400, and you got 600 horsepower here. Right. 600 Italian horses. <laughs> They're the best kind. That's eh? like a thousand regular. Look at what I got for lunch. Diet Snapple. Oh a my god. A couple of bagels and you're uh, good. What a slap in the face. He buys me Diet Snapple. What? I'm not fat. I am. I'm the I right guy. The now this is what I like about being in management. I get, I get to sit in the shade, drink my Snapple iced tea. My partner in crime here. Oh, he, he's got that going, baby. He's turning into a painting monster. All right, so Glenn has this all sanded. We've already gone through in two spots, through up here. So what I want you to do is take blue tape, ordinary blue tape, and just cover that up. So cover the actual whole thing Cover the whole cells. thing up, yeah. Make sure it's pressed down good. Another tip is it's hard to use tape when you have gloves on it hmm. for some reason. I don't know why. True. Okay, do you want me to uh, yeah, just, just it? Just cover it up. Then this, this is really high tech stuff. Just go right around the whole thing. Because, and then it's a little piece in the corner here too. See where we got? There you go. Then what I'll, it just keeps it from, when I mix this up, it's gonna pour through to the other side. And then we'll pull the tape up. That acts as our, like we're making a swoon pool right, right now. I don't know if this is gonna stick down. If this doesn't, you can always use Gorilla Tape or something with more glue, but the reason for using the blue tape, there you go, you can get it off. I'll let you press it down. I just okay, didn't yeah. want to touch it too much. That's My good enough. Done. Style. Done. Okay. Okay, okay we're just roughening it up. You don't have to make it perfect at this point in time, but we want to get, because who knows if there's any oil in there or who knows what, Home Depot paint or Luciano's pizzas in there. Now what we're going to do on this repair, we're going to use Grodak, five minute epoxy and maybe a piece of uh, carbon scrap from our carbon, a little, uh, it looks like we got plenty of e-glass, we got any carbon there? Anyway, it won't matter because the piece, there's no strength there, this is more cosmetic than anything else. But this is, this is the best resin if you're doing this kind of, it's ordinary epoxy, it's five minute resin. Glenn is dabbing in some epoxy. It doesn't really matter where it ends. We're going to sand out whatever ends. Just dab it down, get it sticking down good. And we're done with that. We'll put a second layer of epoxy in there. Trim off all the extra stuff. I'd like to get more epoxy over there. Yep. I'll mix you some more. Okay, three layers of fiberglass. The sun is kicking it off real nice. There's some extra little pieces that we trimmed off. And we can sand that afterwards. Okay, now up here you got one. This here, we're, do you, we'll do the same thing from the back. Let's, oh, yeah. Let's well, see what... there's more going on here. These are the holes we have I to... have a better idea for this. If you would like to, we could dremel this piece out, make the scoop just a little bit bigger. If you want to... There's almost no way you can fix this edge and have it reliable. Sure. 
I mean, it's just on this we crack, could, you got to come all the way out here. Yeah, but that it's a bigger scoop, that's all. It's, this is not... And here, you can go up here if you sure. want. You can just make this piece. I'll get the tool and you decide. And then we'll fix... You got these little spots where, while we're doing this, these we could fix with CA. You got a couple of those that are broken too, right? right? Let that side, you know, cook Each, out. Well, there's a big piece missing from here. Okay, we'll make a piece for that. That's all. <laughs> we could drum <laughs> when we drum a little. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. No, you just I need drum the piece. A I mean, you don't want it to be. You don't want it to be too big. Yeah, if you fill this with bondo, though, it's going to crack. Well, no I'm just. I'd, I'd be worried. Let's drum a little out then. That I'd be worried that it's going to crack. Right here, you can make a piece. Go get a piece of blue tape on this side. Cut a piece of the glass. You already done this. Glass, not the carbon fiber. But. No, you don't need carbon fiber for this. What's this going to hold? This, this holds the the, the fairing. No. Put, put, no. The other, this is the side you want to cover. That's it. Make it even so you can see where the edge is. That'll keep the epoxy up there. You're making like a dam, like a swimming pool. Flip it over. No, that's, all right, put another one to make it stiffer. Now cut a piece just a little bit big. Cut three or four pieces. We'll mix some epoxy. And they're going to be bigger. In other words, they're not going to be a butt joint. It's going to go inside like a dovetail joint. That's good. You got it. Let's just flip it over whenever you're ready. Now, while you got this out, put a put a strip along there. Why not fix that while you got the you got the stuff right out there? That'll once that cures, you'll have. Then you can sand that, and we can put the uh, you know whatever you have to do over there. That's two you got done. And this one, we ought to put a little piece just backer in there. Even though you... And you, here. And the same thing here with the tape. Do, do this in one step. Do those two. And then the last thing, we'll fill these little... Where is it? The other side has the little holes. I brought the carbon fiber out. To, we'll show that little trick that we use to pack the holes. I know, you're, I know you know how to do that like an expert. Now I do. I am an expert. You were born knowing that. I am the expert here. <laughs> hey, this part of the repair, Glenn, has just filled in the hole with carbon fiber toe. Build it up bigger than it has to be. And then when you're done, get the, the orbital sander. The just to take that yeah. off. Hey, look at it smoking up here. And you do the same thing there. Yep. Alright, it's almost time to get the baby, so we're uh, we're grinding away here. That's carbon reinforced with the heavy toe. This is heavyweight toe. We were doing it with light before. We'll get the other side done. That's about all we're going to get done today. I mean, let's face facts. This is... How much Bondo work did you get? We got this piece filled we in now. We took out a ton of Bondo, but... The but epoxy has to dry. He reshaped that scoop. The fact of the matter is anybody else would have threw this thing away, probably. I mean, this was crushed on both sides, holes in both sides weak fiberglass on both sides. You did it just to show Steve you're a tough guy. <laughs> or a cheap guy. Or, cheap, or both. <laughs> hey, that that's something to be said for being cheap and old. All right, so tomorrow the thing is the final sanding, priming. We'll redrill the holes. We got all the reinforcements are in. It's and got the rest. On it, so I won't put it down. But you got the piece of wood. Well, you got the piece of wood there. We can't put it into you drill the holes tomorrow. But it'll be, that piece of wood makes that fairing a lot easier to work on. Yeah. So, all right, hang it up in the garage or glue yeah. it to the wall or whatever. Yeah, that's coming out nice.